All right, so now what we need to do is we need to compute both of those quantities. So this one is easy. The reason it's easy is because what we've shown in the lecture is that sigma t prime is just sigma t times 1 minus sigma t. You can just prove it with calculus really easy using the definition of the sigmoid function. So this means that this guy is just going to be sigma of this guy times 1 minus sigma of this guy again. Now, what does that mean? Well, sigma of this guy, this is just the definition of H13. Remember, what we're doing is we're computing d by dw143 of H13. H13 is just this guy. So this means that this is really going to be H13 times 1 minus H13. So that's kind of convenient. So let's remember that and now focus on this guy, which is more complicated. So let's do that. So what we need to do is we need to compute d by dw143 of this sum of the sum over j of w 1 j3 times xj plus b 1 3. Well, what is this? Well, what we need to do is we need to take the derivative with respect to w143 of every term in this sum. How would that work? Well, one way to, to kind of strand it is to just expand this sum. So this would be equal to d by dw143 of w113 times x1 plus w123 times x2 plus and so on plus w143 times x4 plus and so on plus b13. Well, what is this? Well, if you try to change w143, this guy wouldn't change, and this guy wouldn't change, and this guy wouldn't change. In fact, the only term that would change is this guy, because if you change w143, well, this guy grows. By how much? Well, the derivative of this term with respect to w143 is going to be just x4. The derivative with respect to w143 of all the other terms is just going to be 0. So what that means is that this is going to be equal to x4. What does it mean? It means that we can we computed this we computed this turned out to be just x4 which means that we get to write h13 times 1 minus h13 this is this guy we worked it out, times x4. That's it. 